And uh, with that, we're actually going to jump right into our first story because we have Andre here, as I said, for a short, short period of time. And the news that took the world by storm today, or should I say, uh, distracted you from the Shabade Onoy news. <laughs> <laughs> and that is that Star Wars announces a new movie, The Mandalorian and Grogu, from director John Favreau. Um, so yeah, this, oh, and it's Price of Reason joining us as well. How you doing, Price? Uh, I think he's muted. Am I muted now? No, nope, we're here. Yeah. Okay. Welcome. Cool. Thanks. And yeah, we're just getting started here because we only got Andre for a few minutes. So uh, we wanted to catch his, because uh, you just dropped a video on this not too long ago, Andre. Uh, so go yeah. ahead and take us through the uh, really short announcement that we got today. Yeah, uh, out of the blue, all of a sudden, we just got an announcement. It wasn't much of an announcement. Like right here, we see the variety write-up. But really, it was sort of a press release published on StarWars.com, uh, where we are just a very brief um, words uh, told that uh, John Favreau will be writing and producing uh, a Star Wars uh, movie centered around the Mandalorian and Grogu presumably concluding their storyline and quite possibly this is the replacement of the Mandalorian season four. We don't know. This is not yet confirmed, but he's very excited to do it. Kathleen Kennedy is excited for him to do it. And they also confirmed that other Star Wars movies in development are, of course, uh, the the Ray movie from the activist director who hates men and loves the WEF. Uh, and uh, the Dave Filoni Throne movie, as well as James Mangold's Distant Past movie, so that Kathleen Kennedy can reframe the past, present, and future of Star Wars still. Oh, and uh, Favreau's Mandalorian. Uh, I noticed uh, uh, there's a few yeah, things that weren't here, though, and that was Taika Waititi's, for one. That is very interesting, because I do think that this is probably the complete list of upcoming Star Wars movies. So everything that's not here ain't happening. That's what I'm thinking, including Taika Waititi. Yeah. So, Andre, before we lose you here, what, what do you think is going on here? Because up to this point, John Favreau has been pretty AWOL from the last season of Mandalorian. For the most part, his character got killed off. It's all been Dave Filoni this and Dave Filoni that. Dave, 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 Dave. Dave as we've also pointed out in our video again today. So Indeed. what do you think? I think your I think your video today, and again, this is just your theory, but go ahead and present your theory, because I think it's probably correct. My theory, or rather my speculation, and I stress that it's speculation. I have no source saying this. I have no nothing. This is just me reading the tea leaves. But based on reading those tea leaves, I think that this is something that Bob Iger has initiated. I think that this suggests that Bob Iger has lost faith in Kathleen Kennedy and Dave Filoni's again. ability to fix Star Wars again. But he knows that uh, John Favreau can do it. So he has John Favreau to come in and create some excitement, what he hopes is going to be excitement, to do something to end this horrible Ray and the White Shinoi news cycle. Uh, and as Mr. H pointed out, for those that uh, came from there, he pointed out a very astute observation, namely that there's soon another Disney earnings call, and they don't want to go into that with just negative hype surrounding a Star Wars project. If they can get some positive news with John Favreau prior to that earnings call, that would be really good timing for Bob Iger. So I no. think this is a Bob Iger initiative. And I want to expand on your, your theory a little bit and then throw it to the rest of the cast here. Cause I agree with you. And I think actually thinking back on it now, I'm starting to wonder if Filoni wasn't one of his dictations too, but he's realized this is a mistake because of the reaction that they've had to both Mandalorian season three, Ahsoka, and now this, or not this, but the, uh, Abade Shinoi Ray thing. And so I think this, as you were pointing out is a big distraction on that part, but also a desperate move by begging Favreau to come back into this mix after he kind of pretty much put his stamp on it and said, I'm done because you guys have screwed up my plans. I don't know if you agree with that or not, but then I want to throw it to the, everybody else. Yeah. Let's hear from everybody else. Yeah. I wonder if he had faith in Filoni at first and now he's lost faith, but yeah. Six, let's start with you since you're the, probably the biggest Star Wars fan here. 
Yeah, real Star Wars, not Disney Star Wars. I this it almost means nothing to me seeing this headline. I'll I'll believe it when I'm sitting in the theater with a box of curly fries in my lap and the opening credits are going. I I don't care about this. Um the timing of of the announcement is this to um try to deflect some of the bad press that's been going on about I can't I don't want to screw up her name because I don't want anybody to think I'm making fun of her. Obeyed Shane. Is that her Chinoy. last name? Shinoy. Just yeah. remember that the final word rhymes with annoy. <laughs> no, that's why yeah, I call her obeyed annoy. Um, <laughs> but how much homework are people gonna have to do in order to be caught up to see this movie? I I'm blown away that they're heading to the theater. I think that we're going to see a Ray movie before we see a Mandalorian the movie mm. in the theater. It's interesting you say mm. that six, because before we pass this along, the way it's kind of stated in this statement, it almost sounds like this movie's coming first. Cause let me read this bottom part to you guys real quick. It says the Mandalorian and Grogu will lead lead Lucasfilm's ongoing feature development slate, including mm -hmm. films helmed by Charmin Obeid Shinoy, James Mangold and Dave Filoni who is currently developing Ahsoka season two among those in the works. So the way I'm reading this, and I could be wrong, but my interpretation is this is we're getting Mando and Grogu first. What I guess what I mean when I say that is I, I don't, I can't believe that it's going to, that they're going to, I agree the with theater. you because I think it's going to yeah. have the Dr. Strange effect. And yeah. not only that, I think the reason this might be getting ready to go first is because I think this is de facto season three of Mandalorian. And I think you're also right about that. Four. Andre. four. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that what I said? Season four. But yeah. But yeah. So six, any final thoughts on that? And then we'll go ahead to CC. No, I'm, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel your pain. Uh, CC, what do you think about this? Yeah, one dependable you know, behavior you can count on from people is that they will abandon a, sh a sinking ship to join the winning side. You know, whoever they they, they view to be uh, the the winner in a war or the successful person, they want to be on that side of the battle, right? Uh, that I mean, that includes both the people that were always close friends and loyal to the to the winning side but also the vast majority of, of us who we're, we're the homer simpson wearing that jersey and backing into the hedge when the team goes under and then we come back out of the hedge wearing a different jersey and i think you know when it comes to john favreau whether he's at disney or or not he's he, he's not strictly a part of disney he, he's an independent who will be successful he's a very talented uh person who will who will have success for many years in the industry at least that, that's my impression that's a good observation yeah. and you know when, it, when it, i've seen this in other companies too like with john lassiter when he left he brought all he brought a lot of talent with him people who, who saw that that man as being you know the, the guy to follow that doesn't they're not loyal to disney they're loyal to john lassiter and i and i would have to think that john favreau has a very large group of talent that is loyal to him as well and probably some very talented people in the middle who you know went along with what was going on and, and probably you know were part of kennedy's team but whether or not kathleen kennedy leaves uh, and how she leaves and, I, and I, I don't think she's getting fired or anything of that sort uh and it, but her her ship is sinking uh, and i think that people can see that and you know the wise talent uh, among Disney working you know, at Lucasfilm would probably say, you know, I, I'd like to be hired by John Favreau in the future. Maybe he's not at Disney at that point, but I'd like to get the call. I'd like to, to work with him again. And they're probably considering those options. So that's my take. All right. Clobbering times. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I'm kind of I'm with six on this. I don't care a whole lot anymore because I didn't really care much for that or dislike that last season of Mandalorian. It's been on three years. I just can't. I just don't see the wisdom. I know Favreau. If you were to let Favreau do just another Star Wars film, maybe. But the fact that it's Mandalorian uh, makes me think this is just a big, I don't know, a big nothing. Uh, again, and it is the the the. the Timing of the announcement is, is amusing to me as well. I think it's already been pointed out. 
that it's like a major uh, distraction or deflection from the horrible press they've been getting the past week. So I don't know, but I do think you're right, Tom, that it'll probably be first if they do make this thing. Well, I'm you just know. going by what they said in the press release. Yeah, thing. I think and, so. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, again, and, what do you have? They don't have a lot of work to do to set it up. Well, and I think, yeah, I think it's already kind of pre, they already have whatever they were going to use for season four. That's my other thing is maybe That's, it wasn't yes. enough for an entire season and they're like, Good what do point. we do? And oh, we'll just make a fucking movie. Or it's just all the Grogu, um, Grogu and uh, Mando stuff and then everything else will be taken over by Filoni anyway and his thing. Because that was the original thing. See, this is the thing. When he announced, or when they announced all those shows, including Rangers of the Republic and all that business, remember it was all supposed to culminate together, right? Yes. It's some big massive event. Yes. Well, where's this big massive event now? Well, it's been co-opted by Filoni into this uh uh heir to the heir to the empire or whatever. Right. So and I don't even know if Grogu and, and Mando factor into that at all, really. So that's no, where I think so Andre's good. correct too on that. And you you're right. And I think this is just whatever little fragments were left over from Favreau's, you know, plan book, maybe. But uh I figure yeah, put it anyway. in the theater, see if it sticks because Grogu's po- Grogu's popular. Yep. And we don't have to do a whole season. And I it seems like a mess to me. And if you know, personally. Yeah, I don't I think six is right too on whether or not that's going to translate to the big screen is a good question. Yeah. Um, Price? Well, the second I saw this announcement, and it's while I was working on a video about that Chinoy thing, I just I automatically thought this has something to do with Iger as well. Because John Favreau always seemed to me like he's kind of Iger's guy. Even at the time when Kathleen Kennedy was doing stupid things with the sequel trilogy and solo, I've always been under the impression, in spite of what they said, that he's the one that brought John Favreau in to, to handle the Mandalorian. And I feel like once again, he's going to his go-to guy. And as far as he's concerned, in my opinion, this is the only movie, as far as Iger's concerned, out of all of these, that's going to get made. Maybe the Ahsoka one with, with Fino- Filoni, but I think that I don't know if Iger thinks that that one with Shinoi will ever get made, and I personally don't know if it'll ever get made either. At least not with Kennedy and with Shinoi. I, I feel like mm. I feel like that's one of those Patty Jenkins situations. It's just going to go on for years now with delays and delays and delays until we never hear about it again, like the Lando series, like anything Green. else. Green. And I feel like uh, Iger is really gambling here on Favreau. I would even go a step further and say that Iger in his heart of hearts, probably would want Favreau to step in here and maybe replace Kennedy once he can get her to leave. I know this all sounds very extravagant, but I I actually feel like that's probably what Iger would want. And maybe he somehow wooed Favreau. He told him, listen, man, we're doing it now. Sure, her contract ends at the end of the year. You're going to do this movie. This is going to be our highest priority. That's why they said they're leading with this. And I even think the whole situation with Kennedy and Chinoy, she did it just to annoy him. And not only to annoy him, but to sort of drum up some press and some sympathy that she's a feminist and she brought another feminist and rally some of those shills and activists around her in the in the media. But I feel like this is uh, this is obviously to me Iger running some type of interference. That's my thoughts. Yeah, Andre, what do you think about that? Because that's true. I mean, at the end of the day, the Iger, we as we've reported ourselves, has lost confidence in kathleen before and that's where he even said the buck stops with me there has been mistakes made you know and stuff like that and here we are basically again repeating history it feels like almost because price is right bob did bring in favreau and that was where kathleen said okay fine but then i want my boy david in there too Uh, yeah and i can't believe i just can't believe that kathleen kennedy would ask john favreau to come back and that his movie would have precedence over everything that she was so proud to announce at Star Wars Celebration last year. I just can't yeah. believe that. This has to be something she's forced to do by someone else. Which just goes to show that she has those power. That uh, that uh, that the Indiana Jones failure really screwed her up. Oh, and that's one of the things I think is a big bullet right now, because... Of all the things that they have done, they spent that much money on that. And unlike The Force Awakens, which they spent similar amount on, Force Awakens brought in $2.5 billion. This didn't. 
this flopped as bad as as Harrison is uh I almost said Harrison Ford uh, solo did without Harrison Ford in it. So yeah. So I don't know. But I know you have to be leaving us soon, Andre. So was there any more thoughts you had on this before we go? Um I wish that Favreau was in charge of everything and they could mm-hmm. cancel everything else. Because then there actually might yeah. be hope here. I think that uh, if if Favreau was given enough power, he he could write this ship. He could still find a way to salvage uh, all of this. It would take time, but he could do it. But what bothers me the most about this is that, yeah, Favreau is back, but he's back in a den of snakes and a pit of vipers. Because if all these other Kennedy projects are still happening, then what's what's the point in being excited for this? This is just going to round out the Mandalorian storyline so that all we have to look forward to are all of the other Kathleen Kennedy projects that come after. So I'm not excited for this. The only thing that's going to change my mind if Kathleen Kennedy's projects start not happening. Yeah. Yeah, and that and if price is correct, then you you would see that if this movie actually does hit big yeah. and does well, then I think you're right. I think you'd see some of those other projects start to fall off and or disappear as we go yeah. along. It'll be like, well, whatever yeah. happened to that? Oh yeah. Well No one would miss them. Like this is the thing. This is the one thing that there's gonna be any level of excitement for. Nothing of the uh, any of the other stuff can do that. And I see it as false hope at the end of the day. Cause I think you're right. This is a one and done in and out and price is correct on that. Like all the things you were saying, your observations from what we know of reports is correct. Like at this point, he's just basically doing this as work for hire on the side. <laughs> like this is nothing. And it probably won't even tie into any of the other shit at all. Yeah. I was wondering about what his play here is because Gina's gone and Grogu's back with Mando. All his ideas, all his plans are still ruined in that sense. Imagine if he could get uh, if he could get her back. That, that would be a powerful thing. I was thinking that earlier. I was like, wait, that would be weird. But another thing is, you know what would be even funnier is if this movie ends with him just giving him back to Luke. Because <laughs> that was his original plan. <laughs> or is it as simple as he's just, you know what, I'm going to write the best story I can and try and make a good movie but then he like i can't imagine he would do this without some assurance that he's not going to be you know creatively chained down he's, he's already been stabbed before he's like I, you know yeah. it's, it's just gonna happen again 